Let's beat the waiver wire next on Fantasy Football Today in 5. Welcome to FFT in 5. I'm Chris Towers. I'm here with Dan Schneier. We're taking a look ahead at some guys who might be the top waiver wire targets for week 12 before week 11's games like uh, get off. But we're also going to talk about some big questions. We're going to, you know, we got Devon Achan coming back. But Dan, let's talk about some uh, some running back beat the waiver wire targets. Yeah, I think you want to start with Leonard Fournette, who's mm -hmm. 35% rostered right now in CBS leagues. And just a player that we've seen do a bunch of things over the past. We've seen him operate in a two-minute role. We've seen him operate in the red zone. We've seen him operate as a better receiver than people realize. And now with a new offensive coordinator in Buffalo, I just think that opens the door for different possibilities as far as who is going to get touches there. So I'm open to the idea of him potentially develop a, developing a role in your fantasy playoffs or down the stretch. So he's someone I want to talk about. For sure. I would hate for it to be at James Cook's expense because he's a really good player. But what we've seen from this Buffalo Bills offense is as good as James Cook is, he fumbled once all season and they benched him for what, two drives? Correct. They haven't trusted him near the goal line. Leonard Fournette, I don't think he'll be the lead back here, but there's at least a chance, especially if James Cook goes down, it's not going to be Latavius Murray. You know, I think Latavius Murray has his role. So that's that's one. He's 35% rostered. You got any other ones? Yeah, I like the Bears backs, Khalil Herbert and Roshan Johnson. Herbert is 83% rostered. So this mm -hmm. is more of just a, if he was dropped, if you're in a league where you don't have an IR spot, so people weren't holding him. And then Roshan, 48%. We know that, obviously, Deontay Foreman is limited. He's battled injuries. Mm -hmm. It just seems like... A nice time to get in on this offense with Justin Fields coming back and potential for more points. So I just have an eye on those two as well at the running back position. All right, we've got a couple wide receivers we want to talk about. Not necessarily beat the waiver wire because these guys aren't going to do anything this weekend to help their chances. It's more a, hey, yeah. if they were dropped, let's talk about Josh Downs, 68% roster, and Demario Douglas, 51%. Yes. yes, stashing is huge in fantasy football. Josh Downs is one of my favorites. He has a great rapport with Gardner Minshew. They mm -hmm. work together a lot in the offseason. It showed up on tape and it showed up in the stats. Obviously, injuries have kind of watered that down a little and, and kind of stymied it. But mm -hmm. he's going to come back healthy after the bye week. So I really like Downs. Douglas, a little less so for me, maybe more on your radar, Chris. But uh, just because I, I still think there's so much uncertainty at quarterback. That there. offense. That, yeah. That's the biggest yeah. thing is, you know, we, we've gotten a lot of questions about Tamari Douglas over the last few weeks. And, like, he's been decent for fantasy. You know, four catches, 60 yards, five catches, 50 yards, those kind of games. But – I just I think the offense holds the ceiling down, even yeah, if you do yeah. like him as a player. Let's talk about we, we've gotten a couple of tight ends, Dalton Kincaid and Trey McBride over the last couple of yeah. you know last four weeks or so who have really emerged as must start options. What about one who may be coming back from IR this week and could have that kind of potential? I really do like Pat Fryermuth. Always a player I've liked on film. The issue for me with Fryermuth is the issue it's always been. It's Canada, Matt Canada, mm -hmm. the offense he runs, and it's Kenny Pickett, who is not a good NFL quarterback and really, in my opinion, can't continue to keep an offense on, you know, in rhythm for any stretch of period. But Fryermuth has kind of overcome that his entire career and, mm -hmm. you know, or at least last year. And he is also somebody who's won in the red zone. And I think that's an area that they've sorely missed production in, and somebody who can get open and beat zone coverages and those tight constricted areas. So I do like Fryermuth in, in a world where a lot of tight end is just if you score a touchdown or not that week. He is someone who I think has a better chance than most to do that. All right, let's talk about some big questions we're going to be watching out for in Week 11, some storylines. And, and I think the first is just Devon Achan sounds like he's going to be back from IR for the Dolphins. I'm not expecting 20 carries, but he's a top 20 running back for me against the Raiders. Dolphins should have a big lead in this one, should be able to do whatever they want. Where are you ranking him both this week and then what are your expectations the rest of the season? Yeah, he's an RB1 for me rest of season. This mm -hmm. week, he's probably closer to the top 15. I have him a little bit higher than you, I guess. Uh, I'm not sure your exact ranking. Just because I don't think he's the type of back that needs a lot of touches to really sure. make an impact in fantasy. He's proven that this year. I also think that offense was just missing something without him. He really did make a difference. They're going to use him in pre-snap motion, line him up as a receiver, bring him to the backfield. He was using the red zone before the injury. That should continue. It's just an explosive player in the perfect offense that fits his skill set with that one cut and go style of the outside zone blocking scheme. So I still have him, I guess this week, just slightly out of RB1 range, mm -hmm. but moving forward, I really think there's only a few backs I prefer over him. All right. Now I, I want to ask you another question before we go. And that's, I know you've been the Trevor Lawrence guy on our shows. Yeah. 
Give me some reason to be optimistic about Trevor Lawrence. A lot of people are dumping on him right now. Yeah. Give me, give me some reasons to be optimistic. You know, I can't. I haven't seen the tape a lot of uh, a lot mm -hmm. of tape on him this year. I'll be honest. I haven't. I don't think I've seen more than one game. I saw the Baltimore game, which was quite frankly his best game of the season. So it's hard to you know gauge it. But if you look at just that game and what he was able to do in that game. He was able to win outside the numbers. He was able to win with throws that were into tight windows down the field. I just think they need to get back to doing a little bit more of what they did before they got Calvin Ridley in that mm -hmm. offense, which is just utilize Ingram and Zay Jones. Well, Zay Jones, obviously, with the injury, it's been difficult to do. Yeah. But utilize more of the seams. That's where Lawrence really throws his best ball, and that's where he's aggressive, more, than, more so than most quarterbacks. Just haven't seen a lot of those throws this year. So maybe it's just a matter of if they can get him comfortable doing some of the things he did last year. That's a good thing, but I think it's important to know from a fantasy standpoint, Chris, that you wrote about this in the offseason. You weren't the only one. I believe it was you, so correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. But if you take out that insane stretch he had for like four games, his fantasy season wasn't that good last year, and he yeah. wasn't that consistent of a fantasy scorer. So maybe he's just not the fantasy player yet that we need him to be. Yeah, the I think the number was 14 touchdowns in five games. Yes. Uh, and then he played five more games after that. And I think he had six passing touchdowns. And I think four of them came in that one game where he also had four interceptions. So it was a real up and down kind of season for Trevor Lawrence. And I think, you know, people maybe anointed him based on that five game stretch without taking into account the totality of what he did. But I do think better days are ahead yes. than what we've seen so far. It's just, I can't necessarily tell you to start Trevor Lawrence in week 11. So that's one that I'm just, I'm going to keep watching and looking for reasons to be optimistic. Uh, for Trevor Lawrence, and hopefully we'll get some in week 11. And that's going to do it for FFT and 5. We'll see you tomorrow.